the name of God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. I have a confession I have to make. I was driving back from clergy conference last year and something happened that really shook me. Now, if you're not aware, clergy conference is the annual gathering of all the clergy in the Diocese of Atlanta. For the last few years, it's been held at Rock Eagle, which is a 4-H camp way out in Putnam County. It's generally a time of continuing education, but it also has fellowship with our colleagues. Anyway, it was a lovely day, and I was feeling full of the spirit and warm with collegial camaraderie. I was looking forward to being home, sleeping in my own bed, and had one eye on the road and one eye on my GPS. Then I saw some police cars parked alongside the highway. Well, I didn't think too much about it. I was concentrating on getting to the interstate and thinking about what to make for supper that night. And I knew I was within, you know, spitting difference at least, of the speed limit that was posted on my GPS. So I kind of wondered who they were after when I saw one of the police cars switch on their lights and swing out into traffic. Now, if you get nothing else from the sermon this morning, I want you to get this. The cops don't care what your GPS says the speed limit is. <laughs> they only care what the posted speed limit is. So you've been warned. As the lights got bigger in my rear view mirror, I started to get a little more anxious. Could he possibly be after me? Well, of course not. I'll just pull over and see him go right by me. I'm sure that's it. He's in pursuit of someone else and I'm just in the way. I mean, I haven't gotten a ticket since I was 19. I just spent the last couple of days surrounded with church people. I'm a good person. But when he slid in behind me after I pulled over, I realized it was me. He was very polite and explained to me that this was a work zone and the posted limit was 40 miles per hour and I was clocked at nearly 60. I like vaguely pointed to my GPS, which still maintained that the speed limit there was 55 but he just looked sympathetic, took my license, and went back to his car to write up the ticket. Now this may be a good place in the story to acknowledge the fact that the feelings and thoughts that were swirling around in me at the time were possibly quite different than they may have been if I had been a person of color in this circumstance. I hope that the outcome would be no different, but I want you all to realize that I know that this can be a very frightening situation for many of us. But in this case, it was no real drama. I took the ticket and carefully got back on the road. All the drama was inside of me. First, I was really shaken up. Oh my God, did I just get a ticket? How will I explain that to my husband? How did this happen? I'm a good law-abiding person. Then I was mad. I refused to stop at the farm store I usually stopped at. I didn't want any more of my money going to this crooked county. <laughs> then I was confused. Maybe I'm not a good person. I always thought I was, but clearly I had broken the law and endangered people. I couldn't really be angry with the cop. He really, he actually did me a favor. I could have hurt or even killed a worker with my carelessness. The rest of the way home, I struggled with my view of myself as basically a good person in the face of this evidence <laughs> that I wasn't. 
Well, we've all seen this on the news too, right? But I'm a good person, we see people say as they're handcuffed or sentenced. He always seemed like such a good person, the neighbors will say on the nightly news. I mean, my speeding ticket may be fairly minor. I wasn't on the nightly news. But if I had actually killed someone with my carelessness, I could have been in the same boat. The fact is, most of us are neither a good person or a bad person. We are all sinners. And we are all children and heirs of God, too. We all have both weeds and wheat within ourselves. Now, it's easy to read the parable we had this morning and conclude. Some people are bad, some people are good. The good go to heaven, and the bad get sent to hell. Easy and simplistic. But we know life isn't like that. Jesus isn't like that. Heck, the bad people are the same ones he hung out with. Cheaters, prostitutes, violent people on the fringes of society. He didn't write people off as irredeemable or as throwaways. Each was precious and worth healing. And Jesus doesn't write us off either, even with all our weeds. Now, some of our weeds grow through poor choices, like carelessness, greed, or laziness. Some of our weeds, such as shame, feelings of worthlessness, or fear, can be sown in our hearts by others. Sometimes we nurture the weeds, like grudges, or anger, or revenge. But all of us are a fertile field with both wheat and weeds growing within us. And if you're ever wondering how to tell the difference, you can tell by its fruit. The wheat within us, love, respect, humility, generosity, always produces good fruit. The weeds, not so much. And we all have the capability of good acts and bad within us every day. That's why there's no good guy or bad guy, except in the old westerns. None of us are as bad as our worst day, and none of us can rest on our good person label. A person with a gun is just a person with a gun. Able to protect, also able to inflict. A person in a collar can still do bad things. A person on death row can still be a good person, worthy of God's love and our mercy. In reality, all of us always need the grace of God, the support of our community, the knowledge of Christ's love for us, and Christ's healing harvest. For only the grace of God and the knowledge of Christ's love can separate the weeds from the wheat in our hearts and in the hearts of our neighbors. We need to realize that God's harvest is something to be yearned for, not something to be feared or to punish people we think are bad. For did God give us a spirit of fear? No. In our epistle today from Paul, he says God gives us the spirit of adopted children, chosen and loved. The kingdom of God is within us. That field of wheat and weeds is beloved by God and belongs to God. It is only by giving our fields over to Jesus with all its weeds and all its wheat can God gather us home like the prodigal children that we are? Leaving behind the weeds and the chaff that have choked and strangled us in this life, burning away our doubts and our fears, stripping us of want and greed, removing those weights of guilt and anxiety, making us fearless, light, and free to be all that God created us to be, God's loving and loved 
children, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. I drive more carefully now. But even if I make a mistake, even if I do something I regret, I know that doesn't define me or doom me. I know that we are all loved and redeemed by God. A God that will never abandon us, never give up on us, never leave us in the weeds of our own making, but will forever, forever reach out to us, heal us, and welcome us into that joyful harvest festival. Amen.